Well, good morning, good morning, rise and shine. God bless you. This is Pastor Carlos Rivera in Richmond, Virginia, here with the Walking in the Spirit program. Uh, so glad you joined me today. It's uh, it's the end of the week. Hallelujah. We made it. Uh, it's been a great, great week this week. Just had a wonderful time. Wednesday night, I preached on intercession, and that was just it just renewed my spirit again and to understand and be able to communicate the power of interceding, of standing in the gap for others uh, in prayer and watching how God can move and use us. Uh, it's just a powerful, powerful thing. And I, so I've just been really, really blessed this week. And prayer has just been something that's been stirred up in my heart so much, especially within the last month or so. It's just been uh, you know, it's it's been it's been, it's a hunger, right? It's a hunger to be with God, and I believe uh, I heard Tommy Tenney say this uh, a while back. That's a, a pastor that I saw on on, on YouTube, and he said, you know, they, I, there's people who might be better preachers, teachers, prophets. There's people that could always be better than you. Yeah, but when he said this, it really blew me away. He said, but not too many people are gonna out hunger me. Mm, come on, somebody, how hungry are you for God? that really determines how much of God you have. See, it's not about just the knowledge of God. It's not just about the studying of God, but how hungry are you for him? Not just the information, but that impartation of his spirit in your life and actually getting a hold of him. Amen. Praise God. It's very powerful. So so today we're going to go ahead and get started right now. Uh, and of course, I've called this this, uh, this, the title of this gathering today is Lean on His Mercy. Lean on His Mercy. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and I praise you for your presence. In Jesus' name, speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Lean on His Mercy. Luke chapter 1 verse 50 of God's word says this, His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. You see, mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. Drop, drop that in the chat right now. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. See, the Bible says that mercy is new every morning. You know, I remember many years ago when I worked for a computer company, and they sent me to Phoenix for training on this new system. And of course, uh, the classes were amazing, but afterwards, I went out with some of the guys that I was training with from different parts of the country. And of course, some of the conversations weren't really that fruitful. <laughs> at the end of the day, they began to talk about topics, and I was kind of there at the table, at dinner table, and I was, I was trying to fit in. Like I didn't know these people, and I just started laughing at some of their jokes, and I, and I got, I saw myself getting pulled in. And you got to remember, I was actually a pretty young Christian. I maybe had only been saved maybe, maybe a few months, right, several months, and uh, so I found myself in conversations that really weren't very good. And anyway, long story short, I felt so bad afterwards. I remember they wanted to continue to go partying. They wanted to go to, to a bar. And I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to go back to the hotel room because where we went was literally right across the street from the hotel. I said, I'll tell you what, I need to go back to the hotel room and just uh, take care of some stuff over there. But long story short, I went up to my hotel, my hotel room and I was just, I felt so bad. Like I felt so convicted. But, but it was worse than that. I didn't feel convicted. I felt condemned. I felt like, man, I just failed God. This is so terrible. And I remember just, just really being discouraged at that moment. But you see, um, at that time, though I was pretty young in the Lord, I was already attending Bible college at the, at the church. And I remember that we were studying uh, the book of Hebrews. And uh, so uh, I, I, you know, the Lord just kind of spoke to me, just open up the Bible and turn to Hebrew. So when I went to chapter four, which is where we had left off when I, when I left for the school, um, I, I began to read and I got to this chapter uh, four, verse 14. And when I began to read that portion, man, I'll tell you what, that, those scriptures just jumped off the pages. And, and here's what it says. Therefore, since we have a high priest, a great high priest, who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Listen to this. 
Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Man, when I read that, something happened on the inside. I understood God's grace and God's mercy. I realized that there was no justification for me being involved in those conversations. I was guilty as charged. However, God's mercy was there and his grace was there to forgive me and his mercy was there to not judge me. And man, something happened on the inside and I'll tell you what, it changed me forever. I realized that grace is real. And when we fall short, listen, we don't sin because we know we have grace. See, we don't sin because we know have, we have grace. Because grace is something that we don't want to abuse. Because there's times where we're going to need it straight up. But you know, why abuse something that you know you're going to need later on for real, right? See, when we fall short, when you and I fall short, remember that you always have access to his mercy. That's right. When we should have, when we should be judged, when we fall short, man, his mercy is always there. And God would rather apply mercy, would rather give us mercy than judge us anytime because he loves us that much. So that, that was such a great lesson for me to understand that day. And that day forward, I began to become more in touch with God, more loving towards God. And I really wanted to get closer to this God that just, just shared this mercy with me that night. And so the next day I began to just st structure my daily routine. Uh, I began to make sure the Bible was something I read first thing in the morning, every morning. And you know, I decided to create a daily victory plan. Come on, drop that in the chat right now. Create a daily victory plan. In Luke 4, 16, God's word says this. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. See, as was his custom. In other words, Jesus did things in a in a pattern, in a in a traditional uh, uh, custom. In other words, he he created a plan, and his plan every single day, every single Sabbath day, was to be in the synagogue. So he planned that out. He had other things planned as well. See, drop this in the chat right now. Your daily habits decide divine events. Mm, come on, somebody. Your daily habits decide divine events. See, we need to develop a rhythm in our lives. We need to do things that kind of that kind of follow a pattern that will help us to grow. And of course, the discipline to execute it will eventually continue to build us up. Because remember, when we do things systematically and consistently, those things accumulate in our lives. See, take the time today. Take the time to sit down and make your personal list of daily activities. That's right. Something you do every single day. So you can make sure you take each task and give it a specific time of the day so that you can perform it. See, that's such a powerful thing to do. When you do that and you insert this, these certain the habits, like one of the things that I do is when I take my dog out for a walk, I listen to the Bible. I do the Bible reading right on my phone and I listen to the Bible. And then I go for a pretty good walk. So uh, a few minutes later, I'll, I'll switch it over and I may listen to uh, something about health, you know, uh, something about food. You know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a plant based eater, which means I my diet is made of plants, right? Plant based and rice and beans. And anyway, long story short, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to something that encourages my lifestyle, right? For when it comes to eating. And then of course, I'll listen to business stuff, right? I've got business things that I enjoy listening to uh, crypto news because I'm also involved in cryptocurrency. So all these things, I I, I, I take time to listen. It's like, a, like an automatic uh, a, a, a morning ritual because I believe that the first part of the day belongs to God. Of course, when I do this program, but also it belongs to me. <laughs> it's sovereign, right? God is sovereign. And I like to take the first hour and a half or so and give it to me so that I can do the things I want to do, feed myself and learn. Because remember, the um, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, right? So, so hearing what? Hearing the word of God for your spiritual faith 
but faith comes by listening to whatever it is you want to learn and you become more confident by by learning more information about any specific topic whether it be your health whether it be food whether it be god's word all these things together but you get into a daily habit because when you're doing that daily you're constantly feeding yourself and reminding yourself and strengthening your convictions towards that thing as well. So you drop this in the chat right now. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Oh, come on, somebody. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. And remember, man, whatever you do daily will begin to begin to come out of your life, right? Whatever you put in is what comes out. And that is so powerful to understand that too because one of the things that comes out of our lives are the words that we speak. And that's why we have to be very careful with the words that we use. But I believe we need to use power talk. Come on, somebody, drop that in the chat. Use power talk. Look what Proverbs 18, 21 says. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm. Drop this in the chat right now. Your words create your world. Your words create your world. See, power talk is simply speaking words that produce a desired result in yourself and in others. That's right. You speak power talks by looking in a mirror and say, man, you are powerful. You are strong. You are, you are smart. You're intelligent. You're decisive. Come on, you are loved. Man, you begin to speak to yourself and confirm those things and affirm yourself you know, to, uh, and speak those words over yourself. And then you speak those words over people as well. Be quick to praise people at work. Begin to point out all the good things about them and build them up as well. I did that for somebody today. And man, I tell you what, I know it touched their hearts. So you start, start saying what God says about your life. Declare his promises over yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. That's right. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So begin to speak those words over you, that you are the head and not the tail. Begin to speak words of encouragement over yourself as well. See, I believe that those words are so powerful. The Bible says that faith comes by what hearing. So what you say comes back into your ears and creates faith. And it begins to believe what you say. Not just believe it, but it begins to execute according to what you just said. Oh, come on, somebody. If you're great, if you say, man, you are great, then you'll start doing great things. Your mind follows what your words say. Drop that in the chat right now. Your mind follows what your words stay, say. See, words create pictures in your mind. Those pictures decide what you believe. So every time you talk and you speak certain things, it creates a picture and your mind believes it. That's why it's so important for us not to speak negative things, not to talk down to people. Not talk, don't talk bad about your own self in your own mind. Don't find, don't put yourself down, amen. Begin to lift yourself up. And listen, we've all got challenges. Not everybody is perfect, right? But it doesn't matter. Speak those things over yourself and you'll see it. You'll, you'll sense it in your own life. Because sometimes when nobody else speaks good about you, come on, somebody, you got to speak good about yourself, amen. See, your future is designed by what you declare. Mm, come on, somebody. That's a drop mic moment right there. Your future is designed by what you declare. So what you speak, come on, somebody, is launched into your future, begins to mold and creates the path to get there. Oh, come on. That's why your words are so powerful. Speak power talk, speak power words, speak faith words, create that, that, that plan as well so that you're constantly feeding your mind and your brain. My car is my best classroom. I'm always listening to stuff on YouTube and learning more and more every single day. Amen. Praise God. Well, I hope you were blessed by the word of God this morning. And if you were, just listen, smash the share button, become that Facebook evangelist. Amen. And make sure we share this on Facebook this morning. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Come on and join me in prayer right now. Pull out your prayer list if you have your list with you. If this is your first time with us, we do this every morning on in every weekday morning at 7 a.m. Make sure you take time to write down a list of people and things that you're praying for for yourself and for others. 
make a list that way when you're praying you have a strategic approach and of course later on you can go back and see how god has answered those prayers amen praise god come on let's pray heavenly father we just thank you and we praise you this morning because you are a good god we thank you for your goodness your grace and your mercy and Father God, let not our will, but your will be done this morning, Father God. We surrender to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for providing for every need in our lives, oh God. And we just praise you, we thank you. And Father God, forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us of our unrighteousness, oh God. We fall short so often. But Father, we thank you for your mercy today, Lord God. And we praise you. We thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. And Father, help us also to forgive others, Lord God, that we won't carry any grudges, that our hearts would be pure to people, towards people around us, oh God. So help us to forgive and forget the way you have with us. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your protection and camp your angels around us and get us safely to and fro this whole day in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, I thank you, Lord God, that when we fall short, we can lean on your mercy. Thank you that you are a merciful God, that, that Lord God, that your mercy is new every morning. So thank you, my God, for that mercy. Thank you, my God, for your grace. Thank you for your love. And Father, I just praise you and I thank you in Jesus' name. And Father, thank you even now that we can create a victory plan. Help us to create a plan for our daily lives, oh God, the, the things that we need to do every day, Lord God, to learn more, to be more, to grow more. So Father, let that daily plan, starting with meeting with you first thing in the morning, with walking in the Spirit at 7 a.m., Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we put that there and continue, Lord God, to just take that time in the morning for ourselves, Father God, and be a blessing, not just to others, but to ourselves as well, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that we can speak words of power, power talk, Lord God, words of proclamation and declaration, that we can decree things, that we can begin to speak life into those around us, Lord God, to speak life unto ourselves, to, to affirm ourselves, oh God, every single day, Lord Father, to hear words of encouragement that would lift us up, Lord God, and lift others up as well in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray for those that need salvation this morning, that today is their day of salvation, that they'll be drawn to the cross in Jesus' name. I thank you for divine healing right now. Lord, loose your healing power right now all over those that are listening, those that are listening to us later, even right now. Father, I got those on our prayer list right now. In Jesus' name, touch them and heal them. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray right now for those that are bound up, Lord God, in sin, bound up in all kinds of habits and hurts and hang-ups in their lives, Lord God. Break every chain and set the captive free, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your deliverance, your delivering power be loose upon people right now, that they'll be set free of depression, of they'll be set free of discouragement right now, be, be set free from fear, Father God, and, and doubt, Lord Father, even now, in Jesus' name, break every chain on people's lives right now, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you'll restore families, restore marriages right now, my God, in Jesus' holy name, that even right this moment, Lord God, that you just heal those, those people, that they will love and forgive and accept one another, Lord God. Heal the brokenhearted right now. Heal those that have been hurt by a family member or a friend right now. Lord, let there be forgiveness and let there be healing and restore these relationships. And Father, I thank you even now, my God, that you said that all those those that believe, for those that believe, nothing shall be impossible. So right now, in Jesus' name, oh God, we pray for miracles. Confirm your word with miracles, signs, and wonders this morning, my God. In the name of Jesus, we receive them done right now. Loose your miracle working power over your people right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for divine connections, divine 
relationships, Lord God. Bring people into our path, Father God, that we can bless and they can bless us as well, Lord Father. New friends, Father God, uh, new men and women in our lives that would bring joy and peace and love into our hearts, Father. We thank you for new doors that are opening, Father God, in our financial lives, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, even now that there are promotions and raises coming in right now in the name. I speak that over my brothers and sisters right now, that their businesses will continue to prosper, that every wall will be torn down, that every stronghold will be torn down that would try to hinder their prosperity right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for supernatural favor upon your people right now, Lord. Oh, let your divine favor be upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord God, that they will experience your grace, your mercy, and your divine favor. Let your blessings rest upon them this day in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that our dreams and our goals are being accomplished. I thank you, Lord God, that even now, Father God, teach us how to dream big. Teach us, my God, how to dream bigger, have, have God-sized prayers. And Father, I just believe you. Take every limit off our mind, Lord God, that we could truly accomplish great and mighty things for you. And we praise you. We thank you right now, Father God. And Lord, oh, we praise you for the victory. We receive it done by faith. Go ahead. Put your hands together. Put your claps in the chat. Hallelujah. If you've been praying in agreement today, put the number 777. That's right. It is done. It is complete. Just put that in the chat right now as we say amen, amen, and amen. Woo, praise God, hallelujah. What a wonderful way to end the week. A time of just prayer and supplication. And then you know what? Praying by faith, believing and trusting God. Well, you know, I close every gathering with a scripture. And today's scripture is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, where God's word says this, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which we were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Oh, come on, somebody. Fight the good fight. That is so powerful and so encouraging. See, this verse inspires you to never give up and to keep doing what's right. Those who continue to fight the good fight will find joy, will find peace, and they'll find grace and mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you what, I love that scripture. Keep on fighting. Keep on pushing. You're closer to your victory than you think. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, God bless every single one of you. Thanks again for joining me. This week has been fire. Amen. And uh, so praise God. I hope you enjoy your weekend, right? Make sure, listen, church on Sunday, 9 and 11, right? Make sure you're there to worship with us at New Life. And of course, if you're at a different place, different location in this country or in the world, man, make sure you go to church on Sunday. Don't forsake the gathering of the brethren. Amen. That's what God's word says. So praise God. So let me pray a blessing over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for my brothers and sisters. Bless them and keep them, my God. Hallelujah. Lift up your countenance towards them, Father God, even now. Shine your face upon them, Lord God. Be gracious to them, Lord God. Lift up your face towards them and give them peace this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, what a joy it's been with uh, to be with you here this morning. I pray that you'll have a blessed day. Listen, be encouraged today. You are a child of the living God. You are the heir to all that God has. So be blessed today. And always remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. And Lord willing, I'll see you again on Monday morning, 7 a.m. right here on Walking in the Spirit. God bless you.